G'day guys, this is a quick video on how to add a solar panel to your car to charge the second battery. So if you've got a car or a truck and you have a second battery, there's a fairly easy way to add a solar panel into the mix. Generally, your first battery, your starter battery we'll call it, is connected to the vehicle's alternator. The alternator spins at high speed and generates voltage somewhere in the vicinity of 12 to 14 volts when the engine's running. This is enough power to charge the starter battery and quite often it's enough to power a second battery as well. A good setup in a vehicle is to use a voltage sensitive relay or a DC to DC charger to charge the second battery. With the voltage sensitive relay, if you're using one of these, it will allow anything connected to the auxiliary battery to operate until the second battery drops below a certain voltage, let's say 11.8 volts or whatever. When the voltage sensitive relay detects this, it will separate the starter battery from the second battery. This is so that the starter battery always stays at an acceptable level to start the car. If you're using a voltage sensitive relay, um, it essentially cuts off that uh, power to the second battery and allows the starter battery to be fresh and the auxiliary battery to keep running the item, even if it means its own depletion, um, until that item drains the auxiliary battery down to its lowest point. If you're using a DC to DC charger, the second battery is allowed to charge off the starter battery, but only while the car is running. Once the car stops running, the second battery is on its own. This is good because it preserves the starter battery from draining down too low. But the problem is, is that when the car is not running, the second battery can deplete, depending on how many accessories you're trying to run off it. This is where adding a solar panel to the DC to DC charging system can be beneficial. If your DC to DC charger has a manual uh, has a solar input, you can add a solar panel to the system and let the DC to DC charger manage everything. But the two problems with this is solar compatible DC to DC chargers are expensive, and you might already have a DC to DC charger system in place without solar compatibility. And that's where the changeover relay comes in. A changeover relay is simply a five pin relay. Uh, for most cars, 40 amps will be sufficient. So just, just an example, like watts equals volts times amps. So your solar panel size divided by 12 will be the changeover relay size that is required. For example, a 200 watt panel, which is pretty common, divided by 12 volts equals 16.6 .6 amps. But we round that up. Our minimum would normally be about 30, but you want to go up to a 40 just in case. There's no penalty for running a 40 amp relay, even though the panel probably only requires 16 amps. The anatomy of the changeover relay is pretty simple. As it has five pins and they're all labeled in this fashion. So you've got pin 30, 87, 87A, 85 and 86. Uh, pin 30 is connected to the input of your voltage sensitive relay or your DC to DC charger. Pin 86 goes to your ignition positive. 87 goes to your starter battery. 87A goes to your solar panel. And 85 is an earth or ground. So um, that is earth down to the chassis. This is a schematic if you're running a DC to DC system. So the power when the car's running comes in through pin 87. Uh, the relay can sense that the vehicle ignition is on, so it will use 87, pin 87 as the input, and it will output that power to pin 30, which will run into your DC to DC charger and charge your second battery. The minute you turn the key off, the relay can sense that pin 86 has changed and the vehicle ignition is no longer running and it will therefore switch to use pin 87A as the input and output it to pin 30, which 87A goes comes from your solar panel. So that's good. If you turn the car off, your solar panel starts charging your second battery, and while the car's running, you want the alternator to charge the second battery because it can provide more power and, uh, and you can drive along and have, it have the second battery charging at a faster rate. Uh, if you're looking at the schematic, and as all auto electricians do, the vehicle ignition wire is the most annoying wire because you have to find a power source from it that turns 
on uh, when the key is on. Um, thankfully, uh, if you've never heard of one, you can use a fuse tap uh, for ignition power. Uh, the accessory's ignition power should be plumbed into pin 86. If you try and cheat and use permanent power, the solar panel will never input to the relay. Use a fuse tap to find power either at the interior fuse box or the under bonnet fuse box. Uh, and the under bonnet fuse box, the heated seats fuse is often unused and it's quite a good one to tap to get that uh, power to the pin 86. This is a schematic if you've got a older school, so you're running a voltage sensitive relay. The schematic for the voltage sensitive relay is very similar to the, if you're running a DC to DC charger, however, there's a small difference. So you will need to run a solar charge controller in between the panel and pin 87A. That's to regulate the voltage moving between, it'll go in through 87A, come out of pin 30, it'll run through your voltage sensitive relay that's in place already, and it will charge the second battery. Should the auxiliary battery drain down, if, if it's at night time, for example, and the solar panel is off and the auxiliary battery drains down, the voltage sensitive relay is still in place and it will sense through pin 30 that the solar panel is connected and it will allow the solar panel to continue charging the auxiliary battery till the sun goes down and then once the input from pin 87A, which is the solar charge controller, once that source stops, so once it's dark, uh, then the voltage sensitive relay will um, continue to do its thing until the auxiliary battery drains down below a certain voltage and then the voltage sensitive relay will disconnect from the relay. It's important to note the solar panel should not be regulated for the DC to DC charger, but it should be regulated if you are using a solar charge controller. And the solar charge controller should be in between the uh, solar panel and pin 87A. Anyway, that is it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if this was useful. Buy me a coffee. The link's in the description. Thank you.